Trump Legal Cases Daily Digest January 24, 2024 Hello and welcome back to News Media Hans Daily Digest. The GOP presidential landscape has shredded up while the legal challenges become stronger despite the noise. Let's delve straight into it. Nikki Haley challenges Trump. Bring it, Donald, show me what you got. Former South Carolina governor and Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley delivered a bold message to Donald Trump, criticizing his behavior and calling for a head-to-head debate. Referring to Trump's New Hampshire victory speech as a moment when he pitched a fit, Haley expressed her belief that such reactions stem from insecurity and feeling threatened. In her own words, she stated, he was insulting. He was doing what he does, but I know that's what he does when he's insecure. I know that's what he does when he is threatened, and he should feel threatened without a doubt. Undeterred by Trump's previous gaffe confusing her with Nancy Pelosi, Haley fired back, urging Trump to participate in GOP primary debates. Emphatically challenging him, she declared, bring it, Donald, show me what you got. This assertive stance underscores Haley's readiness to engage with Trump directly and her confidence in facing him in a one-on-one debate. Trump's civil fraud trial, defense slams AG's pharma bro comparison as irresponsible. Amid the ongoing civil fraud trial against Donald Trump, tensions escalated as New York Attorney General Letitia James drew a parallel between the case and the recent ruling involving pharma bro Martin Shkreli. James advocated for a lifetime real estate ban for Trump, citing the federal appeals court decision on Shkreli's industry ban. In response, Trump's defense attorney, Clifford Robert, issued a scathing letter to the court, labeling the comparison as misplaced and irresponsible. Robert highlighted the stark differences between the two cases, emphasizing the lack of witnesses, complaints, and victims in Trump's fraud case compared to Shkreli's. Trump attorney Chris Keiss expressed concern about the broader implications of the case, asserting that the AG's actions could jeopardize New York's business transactions. Keiss remarked, this is not just about President Trump. Every major bank CEO and every Wall Street participant should speak out now before the Attorney General's shocking and tyrannical interference in the capital markets places all New York business transactions at risk. The defense's strong pushback suggests a broader significance of the trial beyond Trump himself, with potential repercussions for the state's business landscape. The AG's office, represented by Colleen Faherty, cited New York State Executive Law 6312 as the basis for seeking a lifetime real estate ban on Trump. She argued that the law grants the court the authority to issue a permanent ban in a specific industry, using it as a powerful tool to combat fraudulent practices. As the trial unfolds, the invocation of this legal provision highlights the multifaceted nature of the case and the potential long-term consequences for Trump and the New York business community. The final decision, anticipated later this month, will undoubtedly shape the trajectory of this high-stakes legal battle. Trump's testimony looms in New York defamation trial amid COVID delays. As E. Jean Carroll's defamation case against Donald Trump faced yet another delay due to COVID concerns, the possibility of Trump taking the stand on Thursday emerged. The Manhattan federal court officials postponed proceedings for an additional day after a juror fell ill and Trump's attorney, Alina Habba, expressed feeling unwell following exposure to her COVID-positive parents. The trial, presided over by Judge Lewis Kaplan, left the jury of seven men and two women in suspense about the potential testimony of the former president, who may address the defamatory statements issued in response to Carroll's sexual assault allegations. Carroll's lawsuit seeks at least $10 million in compensation, along with additional punitive damages, for the harm caused by Trump's statements. In June 2019, Trump, then president, denied knowing Carroll and dismissed her accusations as fabrication. The defamation ruling against Trump in this case followed a prior victory for Carroll, who won a trial in May related to Trump's alleged sexual abuse. Despite facing 91 felonies in four criminal cases and numerous lawsuits, Trump remains a prominent figure in the GOP, winning the New Hampshire primary for the Republican presidential nomination amid the ongoing legal battles. Trump's legal limbo, Supreme Court rules significant over the primaries. Donald Trump's triumph in the New Hampshire primary offers him early momentum on the road to the nomination but a significant legal hurdle looms large on February 8 when the Supreme Court hears arguments on his eligibility to run for president. The central question revolves around the 14th Amendment and whether Trump, implicated in the Capitol attack of January 6, 2021, can be deemed an insurrectionist. While legal scholars express doubt that the court will outright bar Trump from running, the case underscores the intricate intersection of his legal battles and political ambitions. Amidst Trump's four criminal trials, the 14th Amendment challenge takes precedence as the most immediate threat. Federal charges related to election subversion and mishandling classified documents, scheduled for spring trials, may face delays that align with the November election, allowing Trump to navigate them without immediate impact on his candidacy. Even if convicted, 
He could run as a felon or seek a pardon if elected. State-level cases in New York and Georgia offer further complexity, with the New York trial set for late March and posing minimal existential risk to his campaign. The Supreme Court's decision will resonate far beyond Trump's legal predicament, shaping the landscape of the 2024 presidential race. As legal intricacies intersect with political strategy, the court's ruling becomes a pivotal moment, underscoring the enduring impact of Trump's legal odyssey on the nation's political fabric. In the intricate dance between legal proceedings and electoral dynamics, the uncertainty surrounding Trump's eligibility adds an unprecedented layer of complexity to the unfolding drama of the 2024 election cycle. Biden gears up for electoral showdown with Trump amidst challenges. President Joe Biden has officially shifted his focus to the general election, anticipating a formidable battle against former President Donald Trump. The New Hampshire primary results have solidified Trump's position as the likely Republican nominee, prompting Biden's campaign to strategize its approach in re-energizing key components of his winning coalition. Acknowledging the anticipated closeness of the race, Biden's advisors are gearing up for an intensified effort in the coming weeks, aiming to overcome challenges posed by party divisions, notably visible in debates over issues like the war in Gaza. While securing the crucial endorsement of the United Auto Workers on Wednesday, Biden faces the reality of a party whose preferences, according to polls, may have leaned towards alternative candidates. Thursday's agenda includes events designed to bolster Biden's economic standing, an area that has proven challenging for the president. Biden's visit to Wisconsin to highlight infrastructure investments aligns with Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's efforts to draw a contrast with Trump in a significant address. As Biden confronts the complexities of uniting a diverse coalition, the series of engagements exemplify both opportunities and challenges on his path to victory, marked by a persistent lead for Trump in some national polls. Can Fonnie Willis and her office step down in Trump election interference case? Recent allegations of an inappropriate relationship between Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis and Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade, hired for the Trump election interference case, have stirred controversy and calls for Willis' removal. Defense attorney Ashley Merchant, representing a former Trump campaign staffer, raised concerns about financial improprieties and potential conflicts of interest in a motion earlier this month. Although Willis denies any romantic involvement, a filing in Wade's divorce case revealed credit card records indicating he paid for vacations with Willis. The situation has prompted renewed discussions about possible actions against Willis in the ongoing prosecution. Multiple options exist for addressing the allegations against Willis. Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee has the authority to remove Willis from the case, as demonstrated in a similar move by another judge in a previous grand jury investigation. However, finding a suitable replacement prosecutor willing to handle the complex case could pose challenges. Additionally, if Willis were to recuse herself, her entire office might step away from the case, with the Prosecuting Attorney's Council of Georgia responsible for appointing a new prosecutor. While legal experts, such as Norm Eisen, suggest no clear legal basis for disqualification, they highlight the distraction these issues have become and propose Wade voluntarily step down. Amid calls for investigation and potential impeachment, the State Bar of Georgia could play a role in disciplining Willis if found guilty of prosecutorial misconduct. However, specific rules for prosecutorial conflicts are not clearly defined. Fulton County Commissioner Bob Ellis and State Senator Brandon Beach have initiated inquiries into possible financial improprieties. The situation underscores the intricate web of legal, ethical, and political challenges surrounding the high-stakes Trump election interference case, with potential consequences rippling through the justice system and political landscape in Georgia. Thanks for watching. If you like it, comment and hit the like and share buttons. Subscribe for future videos.